Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing Zen 4 for the Ryzen, well, Raphael series of processors. I say Raphael because we don't actually really know what these uh, processors are going to be called. Since now Warhol, as I've already you know, put out in a video, seems to be cancelled. So in which case, possibly Raphael could end up being the Ryzen 6000 series. Before we proceed, by the way, you may see me blinking quite a bit in this video. Uh, unfortunately, I'm getting my butt kicked right now with hay fever. I don't know why, it just started right before filming, so that's great. Uh, so yeah, I'm not winking at you, I promise. Uh, I just am getting absolutely wrecked with hay fever. Anyway, getting back onto the video topic, Vegeta on Twitter, I'll of course link the tweet in the video description, is saying that they believe that uh, Raphael is actually going to be released in Q4 of 2022. And this is of course on the AM5 platforms, which brings with it new shiny things such as DDR5 memory. And we've covered this multiple times before, so I'm just gonna glaze over it here. But, um, while this is the same date that I've put out a couple of times now in videos that I'm hearing Q4, a very interesting thing has actually happened. Another source who's proven to be pretty reliable in the past has said that AMD are now stepping up a lot of discussions with its partners for Zen 4, and they've even been hearing possibly June, again, next year, not this year to be very clear. Now I have to say that I am not exactly certain that we're going to see you know, Zen 4 Ryzen release at this point. That would be very early indeed. However, it's possible it could be server-related processes or something entirely different. But if it is true, that would be pretty damn insane. My personal bet though, right now, is that I would say it will be Q4 that we see Raphael released for next year, which does kind of mean that AMD might not have much available to kind of counter Alder Lake. But there's another rumor that's doing the rounds that Alder Lake could actually have less performance than perhaps what we expected. And it could be 40% less uh, performance versus what the earlier rumors were. Now, of course, this does not mean that Alder Lake, you take the performance numbers as an entirety and then cut it back 40%, because naturally that would be absolutely awful and it would probably get stomped at that point in single thread performance by something like Sandy Bridge. Instead, what it probably means is that the performance gains that we're hearing, which are around 20 to 25 percent, depending on who you believe, well, it's probable that you're going to be snipping around 40 percent off of those. Now, why that is, it's quite difficult to know. Again, with all rumors, there's possibly a, a grain of truth in there. Perhaps this could be mobile variants. Perhaps it could be desktop as well. In which case, we're still gonna have a hefty, you know, double digit IPC gain for Alder Lake. It's probably gonna be around 15-ish percent. And that's again at a guess. Um, but it also depends on what they mean in terms of regression. So if it really is performance as a whole, it could be that the IPC is exactly what they're stating, but because the clock frequency is going to be the culprit, and that's kind of how I'm interpreting this, you're going to basically have the processor just not able to achieve the uh, speeds that what we had hoped for. And this is kind of what I've mentioned a couple of times, that the architecture of Alder Lake does seem to be pretty decent, the problem with Alder Lake does seem to still be the 10NM node. And this is possibly a reason that AMD are not that fussed about releasing a new processor architecture. And they just don't feel that they need to. Honestly, I don't know if Warhol was real. Um, a couple of people do insist to me that it was real. But interestingly, someone has also gone on record and told me that yeah, uh, Warhol, and by the way, this is not an official confirmation from AMD, I just want to stress that, but someone has told me that internal roadmaps of AMD did not list this, but several vendor roadmaps did list Warhol. So honestly, Warhol is a bit of a mystery, exactly what stance it is, but it does seem that Warhol was cancelled much earlier than what we anticipated. So I was actually hearing that it only recently got cancelled, but updated information seems to interpret that this is wrong, and it could have even been cancelled the latter part of last year. Either way, it seems to me that AMD, at least in my opinion, are doing the right thing. Their situation um, with Zen 4 is going to be very impressive. Zen 4 is a really nice processor. And of course, not only does it benefit from things like DDR5 memory, 
which naturally means that it can feed those cores a lot more effectively. But you've also got other improvements I've heard, including cache improvements, possibly FPU improvements, and some other bits and pieces as well. I don't think core counts are going to increase for Raphael, aka Ryzen Zen 4, but either way, this architecture is going to be absolutely ridiculous. And I think Intel will compete very well after Alder Lake. I think Raptor Lake and beyond, Intel will do pretty well. And now we're going to mosey our way over to RDNA 3. If you're a regular viewer, and if you are, well, thank you very much. But um, if you're a regular viewer, you'll know I've put out a ton of info recently on RDNA 3 and also some stuff already, preliminary information about RDNA 4. But one thing I said is that RDNA 3 had a performance target of two and a half times greater than that of RDNA 2. And this is thanks to two compute-based chiplets. Of course, these have the CU of the GPU, which is 160 total. And you add to this the actual um, IO die, and that combined with our architectural improvements, AMD was shooting for a two and a half times improvement. So what's really interesting is Yuko Yoshida on Twitter, who has also been known in a couple of other names, including Kitty Corgi, and they've had pretty accurate information in the past, actually tweeted that this is no longer the case. The two and a half times is now actually outdated, and they said it's higher. And I was actually responding on my personal Twitter account. I'll again link the thread in the description. And I decided to do some investigation on this, and well, yeah, um... I'm now very confident that they were actually correct. Now, I don't want to put the figure out quite yet of what the performance is. I want to stress it's not three times greater. So anyone who's thinking it's going to be like, you know, three, three and a half times greater, it's not. However, it is definitely higher than two and a half times. And I'm now extremely confident that RDNA 3 is ridiculous. And I'm trying to not overhype an architecture, which A, is not going to be out for you know, around a year. Let's just kind of round up the dates for a second. And B, it's kind of unfair for AMD, in my opinion, to overhype an architecture because that can lead to a perspective where there's no way in hell, no matter what the processor or GPU is capable of doing, they can ever deliver that. It, it kind of just gets to this like monstrous stage where people are like, okay, I'm expecting it to wake me up and make waffles. However, I do believe that this is probably one of the biggest leaps we've seen in graphics performance basically ever. And I've spoken now to uh, one source and they have told me the performance target and it is actually over that of um, two and a half times. Again, I do know the figure is, but I don't want to put it out quite yet because I want to double check it with at least one to two other people uh, who kind of told me information about RDNA 3. And I should get that pretty soon and then I'll put it out. But yeah, RDNA 3 is looking like it's going to be absolutely ridiculous. And what's quite scary to me about RDNA 3 is that it also has improvements on a lot of different areas of the GPU. It isn't just like, oh, performance is higher. But no, it seems that ray tracing performance is higher. AMD have fixed a lot of the weaknesses of RDNA uh, 2, including improvements in geometry, which I've mentioned multiple times at this point, so I won't, you know, smash the point over the head too much with a club. But, yeah, I mean, the only question I've got at this point, because I've been told that a couple of things regarding the ray tracing, just for a second, I want to harp on that. Um, one person told me that it's more NVIDIA-like, however, that could mean Ampere, or it could mean future architecture, and another person told me that it's closer in performance to what we expect from NVIDIA's Lovelace. And the problem with this statement, and I'm sure many of you are already kind of typing this in the comments below, what does that actually mean in like for like? So, what I'm trying to say is, and let's make this really simple, if you have, let's say, one set of RT cores, and then you compare them against the same number-ish of RT cores on NVIDIA, does that mean that AMDs are like neck and neck, or does it mean that NVIDIAs are above it, but because AMD have more RT cores? Now, the way I'm interpreting it, it seems to be that it's not quite as good as NVIDIAs, but it's not too far off, and because there's more of them, that could lead to some very interesting things indeed. Either way, I'm ultra excited to see what the next generation is. 
And I'm very curious at this stage what NVIDIA and um, Intel can do to compete. Because if this information of RDNA 3 is accurate, and what we've heard previously about Lovelace is accurate, I don't see Lovelace being, you know, as fast. Um, and this could be, you know, it, NVIDIA have definitely been slower than AMD in the past, but from what I understand, RDNA 3 is going to be faster, but it's also going to be extremely energy efficient, again, because of the chiplet nature. And furthermore, Kobe T7 Kimi, um, as well as Yoshida, as well as myself, we're talking a little bit in this thread. And what's basically come out of this is that Narve 33 is a monolithic die. So to be clear, the uh, Narve 31 and 32 seem to be chimplets, but 33 is GFX 11 graphics IP. So it's a later graphics IP. And it's faster than the 69, nice, 100 XT, which again you know i've leaked a couple of times guys but the more people who say this stuff the more i'm like okay so my sources were probably correct and this is looking to be absolutely crazy of course it does depend on the prices like you know let's say worst case scenario and one of these gpus costs you like 1500 bucks for the i don't know what it's going to be called let's just call it the 7950 xt that's a lot of money and you can kind of understand it. But if they're still reasonably priced, I mean, heck, just imagine a decently priced GPU, which is the equivalent of like the 60, uh, yeah, the 6900 XT for kind of the mid range for next gen. There are still a lot of questions I've got as to how all of this is going to break down uh, in terms of competition. And yeah, you know, again, these processors um, as well as GPUs are not going to release tomorrow. And I think it's going to be very interesting, a lot of questions that people have over the you know, next couple of years. And uh, I think one a massive advantage that AMD has, and I might do a video on this separately actually, is the ecosystem. And this is something that NVIDIA have had a, well, let's just be real. They've had a stranglehold on the ecosystem. And this is for multiple reasons. And to be honest, I'm not calling out NVIDIA here. You know, they've put the R&D in the years and years and years, you know, they've been beavering away and you can argue about business practices, but I just want to state from a perspective of like tech, they've put a lot of work into, you know, their software, their drivers, but AMD have as well. And the fact that we have RDNA in the next generation consoles, the, you know, even Samsung smartphones are going to be using RDNA IP. Huh. Well, that's a lot of developers you're targeting. And I've recently had an interview with Frank Azer. I'll link it in the video description. And obviously he cannot leak and talk about architectures which are already out and you know all of that stuff. However, just the way he's talking and the way AMD have stated things in the past, this is obviously a huge thing for developers. And it's gonna mean very interesting questions, I think, going forward. Yeah, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this one. I, I must say. <laughs> this is going to be a very interesting time in the market, at least in my opinion. With all of that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, well, you know what to do, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.